Jay and Sarah here from One Dream Farm. We thought we'd come to you this morning with just a little video. Um, we decided to buy a new incubator uh, for the holiday season. We'll put it that way. Uh, more information down in the comments. But we decided to set up a new incubator and we wanted to bring y'all along and show y'all how to set up an incubator. Uh, from straight out of the box to ready to use and how to properly set your temperatures, what you're looking for, um, far as humidity goes, temperature goes, um, the whole breakdown of how to hatch out eggs. Uh, I know some of you guys out there may be new to this, uh, maybe contemplating on starting on trying to incubate your own eggs. Uh, so maybe this will help give you a little insight on the proper ways to do that um, and how to go about you know that process this here is just a little giant still our incubator um, you know you can pick these up cat supply any most local feed stores you can buy and find them online this is a pretty uh, simple incubator it's just styrofoam incubator it has a, a built-in thermometer or hygrometer on it which is very important we'll discuss that later on in the video um, this one, it says still air incubator, but I'm almost positive this one comes with a fan, which will make it circulated air, but, um, still air or circulated, it really doesn't matter. It, uh, it's just personal preference. Um, as long as you keep your humidity and your temperature set right, you shouldn't have any issues. Uh, this incubator here does not come with an egg turner. That I know is not in. You can buy them separately. Uh, I just happen to have one because, as you can see behind me, this is my cabinet style incubator that um, I've been using for years now. And uh, I have a lot of success out of it. I used to use these smaller incubators, but I decided to go with a bigger cabinet style incubator just for um, more uh, capacity reasons. Uh, Sometimes I do fairly large hatches. Right now, I don't have many in there. I have some quail eggs and a few chicken eggs in it. Just this time of the year, uh, you know, the hens are slowing down on their laying, so I'm slowing down on my hatching. So we're trying to get some Christmas babies, in a sense, uh, coming out of both of these incubators. And thanks to our friends over at KC Family Farms, over in Hogansville, Georgia, if you want to check them out. They're great people. They're awesome. We got a few uh, dozen chicken eggs from them, and we'll be adding some. Oh, and some quail eggs from them. But we'll be adding some of our own, some of theirs, just to see what we're going to get out of them. I believe all the chicken eggs are barnyard mixes. But either way, a chicken's a chicken, a chick's a chicken. We're going to have fun incubating them. Um, and they will bring joy if they hatch. Yes, exactly. Um... So, y'all stay tuned. Uh, we're going to get uh, to unpackaging this one, and we're going to bring y'all along on this journey on from opening up the box to putting the eggs in and everything you need to know in between and for future. Uh, and we'll do more updates on, uh, on the incubator, the process. I'm going to show y'all how to candle eggs um, properly and look for uh, good development, what to look for, what you don't want to see, what you want to see. Um... So, please stay tuned. Uh, the next few videos that we're going to put out, uh, within the next few videos we're putting out, will be some updates on both these incubators. Uh, on the quail eggs that are in the, the big hatcher back here, and the uh, chicken eggs that will be in this one. So, like I said, y'all stay tuned. Keep an eye out for some new videos that we're going to be putting out, uh, explaining more of the processes on the incubation period. But for today, I'm gonna show y'all how to set up an incubator. All right guys, so we're about to unpack the incubator. I got Zoe here with me. She uh, wanted to help set up this incubator and figure out how to use it. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this thing down. We're gonna open her up. And let's see what we got in here. Uh, Uh, it's pretty simple, just a styrofoam incubator here. Uh, I 
and get it out of the box. As you can see, we got the power cord that comes in there. Uh, there's the incubator here. And uh, we do not have a fan, so it will be still an incubator. This here is your heat element right here. But you can buy the fan separate and put it in. So this will be a still air incubator. We got an instruction manual on how to set it up here. Which I know how to set it up, so... We'll be good. Um, this is your thermometer, uh, hygrometer probe. That's going to read your temperature and your humidity. The neat thing about this incubator, I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but how it has these notches here. It actually is notched out here to where your lid sits down nice and tight to the... Uh, to the bottom so it really does seal up pretty nicely um, there is something I'm looking for on here give me a second and I'll find it uh, yeah okay on your bottom it's hard to see right here I could probably show you a little better but right here that little notch that's actually for your cord that will go from your egg tray your egg turner and it's notched out to where you can run your cord through here and you'll still won't have any disruption from your lid actually sealing down tight and holding in your your heat uh, so we're gonna get started we're gonna plug this thing up I'm gonna show y'all guys um, what it looks like like I said this one has the digital readout thermometer hygrometer settings on it so I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like once it's turned on and operating and uh, We'll be right back. All right, guys, as you can see now, it is plugged up, it's turned on, and it's working. As you can see, the heater's on uh, in the incubator. The current temperature right now is 83.3. Your current um, humidity is 62%. Um, you see these three buttons down here. You have a set, an up and a down. Your set, if we hit the set button, it goes up to 99.5. That's the ideal temperature that we want to hatch out these chicken eggs, quail eggs. It's just perfect temperature right there. Um, so the way this works is once the internal temperature reaches the 99.5, it'll stop going up and then start idling out. And that's what we're waiting on. We will not put eggs in here until we're sure that it's at 99.5 for roughly a couple hours. Um, your humidity, I would prefer it for it to be a lot lower, but since we're just now setting it up, there's a lot of moisture in the air inside the house. So once this is locked down for a little while, it'll probably dry out some. Right now, there's no water in here, which we will show you the water trays down here in the bottom here shortly and how to add water into the incubator um, for hatching. But um, I prefer when I start my eggs out to be about 45 to 55 percent humidity in the air right now as you can see it's at 62 percent so in my opinion I'm starting off a little wet but uh we'll discuss more about humidity later on especially in future videos so um i will show you all the egg turner and feature in more setting up here in just one sec uh, we got the top off the incubator right here i'm going to show you guys how to put water in the incubator um, to you need to add water for your humidity um, humidity if you don't know is actually is the moisture in the air um, naturally outside you have natural humidity outside and when a hen setting she from her body heat and from the moisture from the ground actually creates humidity underneath your hen while she's setting and um, it helps the development of the embryos too much humidity can be a bad thing in the beginning stages of your um, hatching your incubation process because your eggs do have pores just like your skin so they do absorb 
uh, moisture in the same way as the, the release moisture. So it's a good way to regulate the moisture inside the shell, but too much humidity can cause them to be over moisturized and could potentially uh, harm the embryos on the inside of the shell. That's one thing to keep in mind. You really don't want super high humidity. If you live in a really humid cl climate, you could probably even do what they call a dry run and not even add water to your incubator. And I have done that and I have been successful doing uh, that in other experiments, which uh, now since we're vlogging, I may even do a hatch like that to um, you know show some of the, the results of a dry run. But for this one, I'm going to actually add water to this incubator. We typically uh, live in a fairly, not dry climate, but it's not super humidity, uh, humid around here. So I'm going to add just a little bit of water to this incubator, and I'm going to show you where. You know, bear with me with this camera. But as you can see, if you can see the individual slots down in the bottom of this incubator here, that's actually where those are water trays. That's where your water is going to rest in the bottom of this incubator. This incubator here has one, two, three, four. Well, technically, this has five slots. Uh, one big one that goes all the way around the entirety of the bottom of this incubator that you can fill up, and then four smaller slots throughout the middle. What I'm going to do, I'm only going to fill up maybe two of these trays for right now, and we'll adjust it if need be. I'd rather put less water in it to start with and then see where my humidity goes versus too much water and it'd be harder to take it out. I don't want to have to take it out and dump the whole incubator and all that stuff, especially after I set the eggs. Um, so I have a just small measuring cup right here that I'm going to pour some water into these slots, into two of these slots. which you can use a turkey baster. It does help. So you go get some more water. And then uh, you can use a turkey baster. It, once the egg turner's in, it's easier to get down in here with like a turkey baster and squeeze water into it, uh, be a little more precise. Right now, since I have nothing in the incubator and I'm just setting up, um, I'm not necessarily worried about how I'm putting the water in. Now, for future reference, you wanna keep an eye on your humidity. And especially when it gets close to lockdown time, which is the period we will discuss later, but it's the period of time where you're going to actually stop turning your eggs. For chicken eggs, it's at, I think it's day 18, uh, three days before hatch, uh, day 18, because it takes 21 days to hatch out uh, chicken eggs, to incubate chicken eggs all the way to full development. They should hatch on day 21. Uh, it can be off by there to give or take your humidity, your uh, temperature and all that it plays a big effect on it. Um, but ideally chicken eggs hatch on day 21. So on lockdown, we'll stop turning these eggs. I will take them out of the egg turner and lay them in the bottom of this incubator on day 18. And then we won't touch them again. When you go into lockdown, you generally, you generally want to raise the, uh, the humidity up to about 65%. That, that, and then also being called lockdown, uh, it's another way to think of it this way. I'm locking down my incubator. I'm not going to open it for any reason unless I absolutely have to. Um, that allows the, uh, the humidity in the air to help moisturize the chicks as they're hatching. Um, opening up the incubator, just a slight bit like that right there can cause cold air to rush into your incubator and hatching chicks can actually get sealed. It's, in a sense, it's like vacuum sealing them inside the shell, inside the, uh, more or less the embryonic sac, inside the shell. You have that membrane on the inside of the shell that they have to break through. If they're not completely broken out, that cold rush of air can seal them in there and honestly, you could have a chick get stuck in the shell and they will not hatch. So, lockdown is lockdown. If you can avoid from opening your incubator for any reason whatsoever, that's the best way to go about doing it. So, um, now we done put water in in the incubator. We done 
um, got it turned on, plugged up. Next step is we're going to put it in our egg turner and we're going to show you the egg turner. Oh, oops. Knock my camera around. All right. So here's how I hold this. Hold it up like that. Right there. So give you over here and let Zoe have a part in her video. This is an automatic egg turner. As you can see, I do believe it holds, uh, I think it's 56 eggs in this. I'm not, you can count them. I'm probably wrong. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay, I'm wrong. It's 48 eggs. 42. 42. What? Yeah, it's 42 eggs. Sorry, bad at math. <laughs> Anyways, 42 egg capacity in this here egg turner. You know, as I'm being corrected multiple times by myself and my wife. Um, yes, yeah, 42 eggs in this egg turner. The way this works, it has a motor right here. It has a plug right here. It's electric. You know, of course it's electric. You plug it in. Like I said, we can run the cord through our incubator hole that it's already there for this purpose. Um, like I had mentioned earlier in this video, the turner really rotates super slow. Like... You'll be watching it for a while just to even notice the movement. It's one of those things to where you'll see it sitting one way, and you come back a couple hours later, and then it's completely different. Um, you can set it down, Zoe. So we're going to end up putting the egg turner in there. Right now, it is not... Um, right now, I'm not putting my eggs in it. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the uh, egg turner, but, uh, I mean, in an incubator. But I'm not going to actually plug it up yet. Right now, if you can see, it's kind of at the, it's almost level. Uh, ideally, I like mine to be kind of flat across when I go to put my eggs in. Because sometimes you have larger eggs and if it's turned too far one way, it can make it harder to put the eggs in the holes. Um, but... So right now it's at a kind of a flattened state. It's not completely level, but it's good enough to where the eggs shouldn't have an issue going into the holes. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, with the time it takes for it to rotate, I'm just it's close enough where I need it now, where I'm not going to worry about plugging it up and then trying to catch it at the perfect uh, set position. So this will work for now. Uh, another thing that I want to break, uh, bring to your attention as far as um, your egg turners go. And your incubator, actually. Right now, this incubator is brand new. It's, you know, store-bought. Y'all see me unpackage it. So the built-up of bacteria from the eggs is not in the incubator yet. But this is a used egg turner. It's not brand new. I have used this egg turner. I've had chickens out of this egg turner. I have cleaned this egg turner since my last hatch, but before I actually set it into this incubator, I'm going to use disinfectant wipes and I'm going to wipe each individual hole and around each rail. Um, these are called rails and uh, each rail, I'm gonna clean the entire incubator. I'm gonna clean the whole, everything, this entire, um, Egg turner. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. Tire egg turner. I'm going to clean the entire thing. Um, it's good in between each hatch. So that way you don't pass uh, bad bacteria onto the new embryos, the new eggs, or the new baby chicks. Um, all, excuse me, all the eggs that will be placed into the egg turner have not been washed. Um, you don't want to wash eggs prior to incubating them. You want to take them as fresh as possible. With that being said, there's bacteria on those eggs. Heat helps grow bacteria. So if you know you put everything together, you can grow a lot of bad bacteria, some good bacteria inside of these egg turners and your incubators. So is this best in between these chats? Um, sterilize your incubator and your egg turners before you run another hatch. Um, that'll help a lot with uh, your hatch rates. You'll be surprised at how big of a difference that'll make if you just take the time. Um, Clorox, uh, Clorox um, disinfectant wipes, Lysol wipes work great. Just 
clean your equipment in between each hatch and it'll help a lot tremendously with your um, hatches so anyways I'm gonna get this wiped down I'm gonna get ready to put it in this incubator uh, we'll be back in a second and I'm gonna give you an update on where the temp is the humidity is in this incubator and we'll give you all a look at the eggs that we will be putting into this incubator here in just a second and uh, we'll get to put them in the turner and get ready to start incubating some eggs just a little video of Zoe wiping off the egg tray this Zoe, what did you ask for for Christmas? Incubator. A what? Incubator. You gotta say it loud. Incubator. An incubator? Is that why you wanted to learn from this video? Is that the only thing you asked for? Mm -mm. What else did you ask for? Cowboy hat. A cowboy hat and an incubator. From the Mouse of Babes. Hey guys, uh, we're back finishing up the video on uh, the incubator setup. It is currently the next day. Uh, my last clip was uh, me saying that you know want to let it sit for a little while, let the temperature get acclimated inside the incubator. Uh, it's good to let it sit for a few hours to make sure your temperature is uh, leveling out right. Um, but I had to go to work, so I'm going to finish up t this morning. Uh, the update on the incubator right now, the temperature is set at, uh, it's holding at 99.5. It will fluctuate up and down. You might go a little, uh, half a degree or so lower, maybe half a degree or so higher. It's, that's typical in pretty much any incubator. Um, let's see, updates as far as what I've done since, uh, the last clip. If you can see up here on top of these, on top of the incubators, these little red, uh, caps. They are vent plugs. There's two holes here and here on the incubator that are vent holes. Um, once I let the incubator run for a little while, um, I noticed that the temperature was way higher than I wanted it to be. Uh, one thing about incubators, it goes off the relative temp inside the room. I don't know if I mentioned that in the video uh, earlier, but once again, if I didn't, I said now, hey, yes, the, uh, your ideal temp for the room or setting, you know, uh, area you have your uh, incubators in is roughly between 65, 80 degrees. If you can maintain a constant temperature of, of in those parameters, uh, it will drastically help your incubator maintain its uh, temperature, inside temperature. So uh, I did end up putting in the egg turner. Um, we found out that the egg turner that I had actually was a little wider than the uh, incubator itself. Uh, it actually calls for a different style of egg turner. This one, it was just a tight fit. Uh, so I plugged it up, made sure that uh, it was going to rotate properly without any uh, problems. And it's, it's working just fine. It's just really snug inside the incubator, but it's no problem. No damage to the incubator, the egg turner, if anything of that sort. So now at this point, it has been running for, well, almost 24 hours now. And it's uh, holding... Um, temperature really well so I feel it's safe to say that we're gonna go ahead and put some eggs in and I will show y'all how to set the eggs in the incubator well into the egg turner and the proper way to set the eggs um, and get them ready for hatching um, there's at this point once the eggs are in we're just gonna shut it up shut it down uh, and just let it sit for the next 18 days uh, just keeping an eye on the humidity levels and the temperature. Uh, make sure everything just stays good. Um, only time I will open this incubator back up is either to put water in or to take the eggs out and candle them, which I will do at roughly day seven. So today would be day one when we put them in the incubator, and then seven days from today, I will pull the eggs out and I will show y'all how to candle eggs to 
check on the embryos and the development of, you know, the chicks inside. If everything's going well, we should be able to start seeing some blood vessels, uh, maybe even some embryos starting to form within the first seven days. Uh, generally, every week is a good thing to go ahead and candle eggs. Um, a lot can happen from the first candling to the second candling. So I like to candle at least twice. Um, which we'll go into that a little bit more in depth during those time periods of what I'm looking for, what I'm looking at, and what we're hoping to see versus what we do see. And we'll see how well the incubator is going to go. Like I said, this incubator was straight out of the box, as y'all seen. It has, we did absolutely nothing to this in any other way besides set it. So this is exactly the way it would be if you would pull the incubator out of the box, plug it up, set your uh your temperature and get ready to in a sense incubate your own eggs so bear with me and i'm gonna show you how we're gonna put the eggs in this incubator and get them into the egg turner and get them ready for um, the hatching process hey guys now you can't really see my face but this is inside the egg turner i mean inside the incubator this is you know the egg turner of course and i'm gonna show you the proper way to put the eggs in the egg turner there is a as most people know you have a round in and you have a pointy in on your eggs uh, for incubation process uh, the incubation purposes you rather put the eggs in with a round end up and the reason being we put the eggs into the egg turner round end up the round part of your egg actually creates an air bubble so as the chicks develop it leaves more, and the, as they develop and get ready to hatch, they have a larger area to break through the shell. And it'll help when they peep the shell or pip the shell, uh, is when they first you know, make the initial hole of breaking through the eggshell. It's a larger area, and uh, it also allows for some breathing. Once it, uh, sometimes a chick will uh, pip the shell, could be even 24 hours before they fully hatch. So that allows to get air into the shell because once the embryo or the chick pips the shell, it's essentially ready for hatching. So it's on its way out. But um, like I said, once again, we'll cover more of that when it gets closer to that time. I plan on doing a lot of updates, videos, um, step by step through this entire process. So uh, y'all just keep your eyes out for those and um, we'll uh, explain as we go along. But for right now, me and Zoe are about to take and uh, put all the eggs that we have into the egg turner. And um, so y'all bear with us. guys uh as you can see egg turner is full of eggs we end up putting all 42 eggs in um like i said earlier in the video um we got a dozen of these eggs here from our uh, good friend over at kc family farms uh sean and ray they are a great homestead family um they do a lot of stuff they have registered nigerian dwarf goats they make a lot of um a lot of products um great people great uh friends uh good people to know if y'all live in this area like i said they're over in hogansville georgia um if y'all want to check them out please do i don't think they have a youtube channel yet um i think that might be something they're looking to get into but um they do have a facebook page it's the letter k and the letter c uh family farms and uh, like i said check them out please they're awesome people um 
we like to help support local business and you know they support us we support them they're just a great great people to know but anyways like i said a dozen of these eggs are from their farm which are burner mixes uh and then the rest of them are from our farm which are also barnyard mix uh eggs we have multiple breeds on our farm but uh i haven't got around to actually separating them by breed yet so uh right now we just have all just barnyard mixes next year i do plan on separating and getting more purebred stock coming out um of course more videos on that later uh how we're going to be doing all the different setups and getting everything you know transitioned over from a giant flock of about 60 land chickens right now to broken down to multiple breeding pens for all the different breeds that we have so i'll definitely y'all stay tuned i'm gonna take you along on that journey and show you how we're gonna set this up and make it but for right now this will work great for the holiday season that uh what we're actually setting up to do this for is kind of a planned thing for holiday baby chicks um and a really good test run for uh the new incubator and the new setup so but as you can see this is pretty much it the egg turner is loaded um all we're gonna do now is just put the lid back on the incubator and we're gonna slide it back into place here and i'm gonna let it heat back up because of course it's been open now for a few minutes so of course the, a lot of the heat didn't escaped uh the humidity is a little different so i'm gonna uh, just keep out over the next couple hours to make sure that uh you know everything's still set and going the way it needs to be uh for these guys to hopefully uh you know hatch out for us uh like i said multiple times in this video i'm gonna be doing more step by steps through this whole process um for our candling uh lockdown getting ready and preparing for babies um hopefully fingers crossed i know all the eggs should be fertile at least all of our hens um uh have been with roosters so we should have fertile eggs so if everything goes uh, good during the incubation process we should end up with some baby chicks and i would love to show y'all guys that so please stay tuned and um there's definitely more to come on this incubator and the one behind me, uh, which we'll be doing. I'll be showing y'all a little bit more on that one. Uh, probably the next video that I actually post about the incubation of eggs because I got some eggs in there. I got a candle soon. And uh, we're going to see how well those eggs are doing. And uh, all those eggs actually came from KC Family Farm. Uh, there's a mixture of quail eggs and chicken eggs in that incubator, which I'll show you that set up when uh my next video when i actually go into candle the eggs i'm gonna show y'all more of candling chicken and quail eggs uh so please stay tuned and watch out for that video also but um officially our incubator set up and it's it's ready to go so um we're gonna see what happens fingers crossed y'all guys stay tuned and see where where we guys, end up that's gonna this. conclude the video um I wasn't in it much, but it was a Zoe and Jay kind of thing, and like like he said, read the comments and you'll see what exactly is going on with the incubator. There's a purpose behind it. Um, I know he mentioned this incubator, which is also full of a tray of half chicken, half quail eggs from Casey Family Farms. I know he mentioned them. They're awesome. Um, we will be... Showing you the hatching process, candling some eggs, and go as we go along, hopefully we'll have a good hatch, especially out of this one because, like I said, there's a purpose. Yeah. Um, that's about all I have. So, like, like Sarah was saying, just to touch, uh, final basis on everything, you know, I will be making more videos on the step-by-step -step process. Um, it's been mentioned multiple times in this video, so I hope I don't really sound like I'm really repetitive. But honestly, I'm just kind of excited because, uh, as like we said in the comments, we'll leave you know a description of why this is kind of so exciting for us and for uh, our children.
But, uh, so yeah, anyways, that concludes today's video. Uh, like we always say, please, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, comment down below. Follow us on Facebook, A One Dream Farm. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, share our videos on all your social media platforms. That really helps us out here on the farm. Um, all right, we have discussed multiple times. I really want to get videos out to you sooner in a more timely manner. But the problem being is with uh, the holidays right around the corner, it's just, and with work scheduling and all the kids being homeschooled, and both our hands are just really full right now of trying to get stuff done around the house and this is real life real world yeah you know, we don't do TV. this for a living so, or anything like we have a, a real <laughs> yeah we have a real farm yeah five real kids full time and it's it's a lot yeah so with that being said trust me we i have videos made uh, that we will be getting out to you guys very soon i just have to edit them and get them uploaded so bear with me on times um but by the time you see in this one, hopefully I have some other ones edited, but I'm not going to guarantee that. Um, but with that being said, please like and share our um, videos, please, on all your social media platforms. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Click that notification bell and get all the notifications for when we do upload videos if you guys would like to see that. And like I said, I have a lot of cool ideas coming very soon. Just bear with us and we're going to be bring y'all along on some uh, amazing journey. Uh, it's all in the works. It's just finding the time and, you know, the right time to do everything done, which would probably be a lot more to come after the holiday season, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know of the stress of the holiday, especially if you have, you know, kids and family that you're trying to spend time with and, you know, prepare for the holidays with. So, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. Um, but honestly, you know, God bless y'all. Thank you for following us along on our journey. Thank you for all your support, you know, with the sharing of our videos, the comments, the uh, all the great feedback you guys give us. And it helps us really stay motivated and keep this going. It means a lot. It really does. So um, I hope everybody has wonderful holidays. If we don't get back to you before then, and finish up uh, making any new videos just due to that time of year. Um, we know. should, though. We should. I'm sure we will. I've already got a video made um, where I made some strawberry jam. We just need to... I just got to edit it. Piece it together. And yeah. So, um, like I said, if we don't get back to you for whatever reason it be, I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. Merry Christmas. You know, uh, I'm sure there's, I know me and one of our daughter's birthdays is right around the corner this month. So, mm -hmm. anybody has any birthdays out there, happy birthday to y'all. Uh, <laughs> you know, everybody just enjoy the rest of the year. Hopefully, you know, everybody sees peace and happiness through the, you know, rest of this year. And we find everybody well going coming into next year. Hopefully, next year is a better one than this one. I uh, know, yes, I hope so. <laughs> so Hopefully, all the way around. But with that being said, this concludes our video. Uh, you guys, God bless. Y'all stay safe.